For the latest top tips, reviews and advice, please subscribe below. Hello and welcome to At Walls Camping and Leisure with me, Mike. Today I'm giving you guys kind of a how-to video on how to attach a side canopy or a side awning onto a tent like this. So something that can be done like any sort of vis-a-vis -vis tent or even a tunnel tent. It's often a question I get asked is what's the best way of attaching, how we'll go about it. So what I'm gonna do is kind of go for a step-by-step -step series of how I'm gonna put this over, explaining why I'm doing thing, certain things. So for this particular example, I'm using a uh, Van Gogh Longleat 600XL. So they actually manufacture a Pacific awning for this particular model. But a lot of model, a lot of sort of uh, tents you find sometimes they don't make one. But there are sometimes you can also find ways to make things fit. So it doesn't have to necessarily be the same brand, nor does it have to be the um, kind of same colour. But if it still you know works in the same manner in terms of the attachments, it just throws over and guys on the back side of it. So the first thing I'll do is just obviously roll this, unravel this. So you've got all in here. This one comes with a ground sheet, which I can't put in the time being. And then you've got poles as well. So for the time being, let's just pop that back in the bag bag. So let's unravel that and see which way we're looking, which is the front and which is the back. So that is the front door. And that's a bit of the back. So you can probably see there's a slight kind of taper with this part here. So that's the front part. And then this part goes to the back. And then you've got gyro points on this side. So what the first thing I'll probably do is, is take the two gyro points that are attached to the very back of the awning itself. There's one, where's the second? And we'll take them over the top and just position them so. So what we do is just putting some of the, this excess fabric over the top. So all I need is two pegs to start with. That'll do. Easiest way probably just to walk it round. Don't necessarily need to throw it over the top. So I'm, good, I'm just gonna disappear for a second. Like I said, I'm gonna just peg it on the other side approximately. But let's take our left hand one first. And we'll just grab the second one while we're here as well. Now what I'm trying to do is sort of, I know roughly where the front door is. So I want to kind of pull the fabric between, on the outside of these two poles. It's one of those things that you can approximately do for the first time and then tweak it later on. So it's not have to be set in stone or anything. So look, so because the door position's here, I'm going to go over the door. So I've pegged this particular guy rope over the back of this pole. So it's going to fit right there. I've done exactly the same with that one there as well. Just put it over the side of that pole, just to get again, because the pole's really gonna be the main way of holding it in place and keeping the seal. So I believe actually the door's been left open on this particular one. So let's shut that door, that way when we get it not pegged out, it's nice and taut, and we're not sort of overstretching the door at any point. It's fine. Let's do the right hand side. Where are we? Come on, where are you? Sweet. So now it's there, what I'm going to do is just actually get the poles out and feed both of the poles through and put them in the ring and pins. That way it sort of creeps an arc. From that point there, what I'll be able to do is sort of tag, peg the back base nice and close to it and adjust it from the other side when I need to. On this particular model, both poles are the same, so there's no need to, it doesn't really matter kind of what goes where. So let's find the sleeve. Just feed that through. So this uh, long is quite a nice little neat tent actually. It's, it's quite a good price point. Uh, and we do a sort of a package deal with the front awning. So you can always check if you want to about that on our uh, website. So I'm just gonna pull it through each side. Make sure it's not going to get caught. Let's put it down like that. So. so I'm going to pop the uh, ring and pin on this one side first. So just find where you're located. So we'll pop that in there like so. Let's 
stay. Be good. That's fine. Keep the fabric in. Just pull the base in a little bit. That way it just gives it a bit more of an arc. Once it sort of digs in the ground, it will kind of stay in position as well. There's your ringing pin on this one. So what I'll do is just clip the pole on, that way it keeps the uh, fabric nice and tight to the actual pole itself and helps to support it in case you get a, a gust of wind come in. Same on the other side. Clip, 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 clip. On it goes. And we'll do the last, but by no means least, Where is the sleeve? So it's, it's actually, again, one person can happily do this on their own. If you've got a second person, it does make life a bit easier just because you've got someone putting a ring in the pin on the other side or they can adjust the back part when they want to as well. There you go. What I've also done, you may have noticed beforehand, uh, was actually I've, I've, where you've got gyrops at the front, I've just removed the two on that pole because obviously they're going to be if you were to peg them, they would end up being inside the actual part of the side awning. Now, really, the same kind of process can be done regardless of whether it's a polled or inflatable model. So I would go about this in no different way of throwing material over the back. The only difference, obviously, with the air poles, I probably would peg first, pull it out, and then pump, rather than, obviously, with the poles, feed it all through. Bring a pin. In it goes. Clip, clip, clip. So now we've actually got it all clipped on, I can sort of get to position with it now. So now, yeah, again, because you've got a, a sort of webbing strap running along the base, you can see how wide it's going to be. So I sort of lean that forward, the front one forward on itself. It will sort of freestand because it's got torsion at the back, you see. That allows me to play with this other one and again, find, find, find a position. Normally use basically two pegs, just to peg the back part here. So where the pole is here, right and tight, almost a little bit past sort of underneath the awning a little bit, because as it pulls forward, it's going to sit forward a touch. So let's get the position right first. So I want to come probably this way a little bit more. And I think that will be fine just there. So we'll just peg that in. And we'll do the same on the other side yet again, trying to get that webbing strap along the bottom, taut. So yeah, you can pull against it, push it right in so it's nice into the awning. So now I've got my position, I'll just come straight forward with the front two pegging points. So what I'll probably do actually is just use a guy rope to help me out here. Just peg that forward. And that'll keep it in place. Let's get that nice and straight. That's that front. Let's pull that forward again, and we've also got to pull against that, pull against the tent as well, but pull against the webbing strap to get it nice and square, because you want it to be dead flat, nice and dead square. And you've got two little pegging points here. That can just come forward. Just approximately peg that first of all so I get the other side nice and tight. It's got one little side pegging point. So now that it's kind of taken shape, if you can continue to sort of peg the rest of the guy rope points. On this ticket board, you've got a few facing forward, just to keep the, the roof of the actual side part nice and taut, and then a few sideways just to brace it against the wind coming from across ways. Now, in case you got the pegging point nice and flush at the bottom, it should, as it is there, sit flush to the fabric. If it's fine, you isn't, 
what you can do is actually slacken off these a bit to allow it to go push back a bit more. If need be, release the front guy rope points. So let's just relieve that. So that allows it to go back a bit more as well. And from the other side now, I'm going to put, pull it out and you want to almost kind of uh, peg it, rather than peg straight like we've got with the guy at the front, you want to peg it on sort of at the angle outway, outwards. What it does, it not only pulls the fabric against the awning that way, but it pulls it back nice and taut as well. So what you don't find is you keep the whole roof nice and taut, it doesn't sort of sag and collect water anywhere. So let's just quickly do that. So we've got plenty of fabric to play with on this side. And if need be, I can just, just tension the gyro points. But of course, you don't want to over tighten too much because then what's happening is you squish down the tent. But that, that's bang on. Beautiful. Roof's nice and taut. The canopy's nice and taut. And yet again, you've got the fabric all nice and taut as well, and then it's up and ready to go. So that's a bit of a, a sort of a howls to guide about how to pitch one of these. It's a brilliant extra, to, you can add pretty much to any tent, and it again just gives you a bit of an extra additional space. Let's pop that in there. And again, you can roll this door up. Just gives you a bit of extra space to help put sort of wet, muddy shoes to keep things nice and clean and dry. Well, a lot of people I know actually will use this as kind of a uh, portable toilet area. So there's just somewhere where you can actually put something in here. So in case the kids need to, you know, go to the toilet in the evening, they don't have to go all the way to the toilet block. In fact, it's just tight to touch that up a little bit. And then you've got a nice shelter straight into here. So then means you can leave this main door open because you've got a nice canopy. Admittedly, you won't always get it sort of dead flush here because it's the nature of it. But like I said, by doing those little tweaking points, it's something you can get it to sit nice and close because this, that curvature is built into the side awning. So it is designed to follow the same contour, the shape of the tent itself, but nice and simple and easy. And if you have any more questions, of course, do feel free to let us know. But that in essence is kind of a how-to guide to pitch a side awning onto your tent.